Hello, and uh, thank you again for joining uh, Sabre for, and our features, future guest uh, at the CARPA ACT uh, Global Summit. And a very special welcome uh, to all the audiences that, that's uh, watching our live streaming program. We're very excited to have you here for this informative, and you'll see uh, a straight talk on revenue management followed by a revenue optimizer, our new product launch uh, demonstration by the experts. My name is Pramod, Pramod Jain. I'm the Vice President for uh, Sabre Air Vision Marketing and Solution Management, where my role is to drive product strategy and uh, product management for all our airline commercial planning products. And to begin, let me introduce you to our esteemed guest, the panelist, and our moderator. We're very excited to have uh, Mr. Regas. Duganis has our panel moderator. Regas is an aviation consultant and a strategy advisor to numerous airlines. He's also the chairman of the Aviation Club, Brussels, and a visiting professor at Cranfield Institute of Technology. Regas is also a well-established author, having written numerous books on the aviation industry. On the panel, we are very excited to have with us the following guests that include Roland Jaggi, which, who has been with Aegean Airlines based out of Athens in Greece for over 10 years, currently the Director of Revenue Management, Pricing, and International Sales. Previous to Aegean, Roland held numerous roles at Swiss Air, including GM, Pricing, and Revenue Management. Welcome, Roland. Sergio Mendoza from Aaron Guru, co-founder and CEO at Aaron Guru, providing comprehensive pricing intelligence for airlines, helping them optimize fare structures. Sergio has been a senior vice president, spending 14 years at LATAM Airlines, responsible for revenue management, pricing, distribution, commercial systems, and innovation. Next to Sergio is uh, Giorgio Caligari yeah. from Aeroflot Airlines. Joined Aeroflot in 2011 and is currently the Deputy General Director, Strategy and Alliances at this airline. Before that, from 1990 onwards, Giorgio held various positions at Alitalia, including Vice President for Sales, Vice President for Business Development, and Executive Vice President for Alliances and Strategies. Last but not the least, Sergei Shebelov from Sabre. Senior Director for Operations Research at Sabre, where he leads a team of 70 brightest minds in the industry, the OR research professionals, in design, development, and maintenance of decision support systems. Sergey is also a chair member of the Aggie Force Scheduling and Strategic Planning Group and facilitates research collaboration initiatives with leading academic universities, such as Tongi University, MIT, Georgia Tech, and Royal Institute of Technology. So without further ado, let me hand over the next one hour to Mr. Regas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We are having a panel on revenue management, and the, it's called State Talk on Revenue Management, because I think that revenue management is at the heart of the airline business. And I can think of five very good reasons why we should be focusing on revenue management. Firstly. The last 15 years have been 15 years of instability in the airline industry. Don't be fooled by the good profits of the last two years. Since the beginning of this um, millennium, the airline industry has suffered many bad years and relatively few good ones. High fuel prices in 2008, 2014, we've had two financial crises, and the consequence of that is that airlines have put a lot of effort into reducing costs. And they can't squeeze costs anymore. The only way in the long term they can improve their profitability is on the revenue side. Secondly, small changes in the revenue per available seat kilometer can make a big difference in the profitability of an airline. Now, I'll give you one example. I've just spent nine years as a non-executive director of EasyJet. A 1% increase in the revenue per available seat kilometer at EasyJet means a 60 million gain in, in the revenue. What is 1% increase in uh, RASC? It's equivalent to about 60 euro cents. In other words, not even one euro, 60 cents increase in revenue from all sources generates 60 million in additional revenue. Thirdly, Fuel price is now low. The airlines are doing well. 
but almost every forecaster tells you that the fuel price will go up. And when the fuel price goes up, the only response the airlines will have, they can't cut costs any further, is to look at the revenue side. Fourthly, and I think that came out this morning in the discussions below, revenue management is not just about revenue. It's about gaining a competitive advantage. If you have a better revenue system, a better optimization system, you, you, you have a competitive edge. And finally, and it's my experience being involved with EasyJet over virtually 10 years, is revenue management is the one area where technology and technological innovation can make the biggest impact on airline profitability. So there are five good reasons why we should focus on revenue management and how to improve it. And we have a distinguished panel, uh, both from supply uh, and the demand side, if you like, in terms of revenue management. Um, and I'm going to ask them a series of questions. The first question is really to take a long-term view. Looking over the next five or 10 years, as we've been doing downstairs, in terms of business strategies, what are the biggest challenges that airlines face on the revenue management side? Roland, you, you're with Aegean, a relatively small airline, dynamic, successful. What are your challenges in terms of revenue management? Not now, but looking forward. Right. <clears throat> Before looking forward, let's have a quick look what we do now. Today, we optimize revenue on a segment level. We have airlines like ours, we moved on a network level, we do o and revenue management. And some of us airlines, we also do point of origin or point of sales, and that's pretty much it. If you request an availability from me, you will get exact the same answer as if you request an availability from me. And that has been fine so far, and looking forward, in five to ten years, the challenges I see is I want to give you an availability you deserve. Based on what I know about you, I want to give you a price which may be different from you. If I know that Rigas always sits on, th on seat 3 Charlie, I want to offer you not just a price for a seat, I want to offer you also seat 3A. Because I know Rigas will pay me maybe 5 euros for seat 3A. Now Sergios in Spain who travels once in a lifetime on a Chian, I don't know Sergios or I don't know him well, he will get another prize. And I see there the, 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 the biggest challenge in five to ten years from now is really to serve every customer based on what I know about the customer and make a different revenue optimized price offer available. But what if two customers want seat 3A? How do you resolve that? First come, first served. <laughs> okay. Uh, Giorgio, uh, your long-term uh, uh, issues with revenue uh, management challenges. Well, thanks, Rigas, uh, and, and thanks to Sabre for, uh, for inviting uh, us to be part of this panel. If I may, I, I, I'd step a little bit back in the sense that uh, I've read in a number of documents, and it was... Uh, uh, also published uh, in, in you know, publications that are, are distributed in the event that airlines are now in transition, are in a transition phase. Now, I, uh, unfortunately, I'm, not, I'm no longer young enough to, to, uh, to be able to say that I've, n I've seen a phase where uh, uh, airlines were not in transition. So, uh, In fact, a succession of transitions. <laughs> yes. So uh, uh, I think that uh, airlines are always uh, being faced with uh, uh, newer and newer challenges. Uh, now, the, the good thing about uh, the discussion today is that uh, we are putting again uh, uh, the revenue part of the exercise into uh, a prominent uh, you know, part of the picture because uh, for, for a number of years, uh, airlines have, have uh, focused almost exclusively in uh, taking out cost. Well, that's what I was saying, that it, it was the, Which is, uh, the high fuel prices that were driving us to do that. Yeah, I, I, that, that's why I was saying I'll take it a bit, uh, I mean, a, st a step back in the sense that you need to do that. So you need to continuously 
uh, make sure that uh, you optimize your operations because uh, there will always be somebody that has, uh, has uh, new procedures, uh, leaner procedures, and therefore that uh, will come up with better uh, cost structure. Therefore, you cannot take, uh, take your eye off the ball of, uh, of uh, cost reductions. But, but if you don't fill your seats in, the, in, the, in an optimal way, if you don't maximize your revenue, then you'll still end up uh, losing. So the big challenge is, is to balance what is, uh, let me say, uh, an efficient cost structure with, uh, with an improved understanding of how you can maximize revenue. But you don't answer the long term. Is that your long term strategy? Yes, definitely. That's, uh, if, uh, if, if we talk about Aeroflot, uh, uh, that's the core of our uh, basically multi-brand uh, policy. You know? Because uh, in, in segmenting our product in order to cater to different uh, market segments is, uh, is, is uh, obviously based on being able to offer the ideal pricing point to each of the various segments uh, with each of the products. So definitely... That's one of our priorities for the future. Uh, Sergio, you, you straddled both the, the airline side and more, if I can say, the consultancy uh, supplying advice side. Where do you see the long-term uh, business problems being in terms of revenue management? First, I think uh, probably one of the most um, challenging uh, issues happening already is consumer empowerment. I see uh, consumer empower empowerment increasing over time, basically due to social networks, due to apps, very powerful apps, uh, artificial intelligence, and so on. And that takes to the second big challenge, which is uh, information asymmetry. Today, consumers are managing more and better information than airlines. They have access to information 24 times 7 times 365, they take decisions over the weekend when the airline is not working. Uh, and you see the uh, information that the airline handles, the revenue management teams handle, and the, uh, the software that they have available is very outdated, very old-fashioned, very inefficient, uh, very user unfriendly. So customers react much faster than the airline. They take advantage of the arbitrage of the uh, fire filing errors, for example, and so on. Third, um, with information asymmetry, uh, you have also uh, big volumes of data available. So you have a problem of complexity. Data is getting more and more complex as we speak. More and more data available. How do you handle all that? So it's going to be crazy. With Internet of Things, uh, with Internet of People, and so on, there will be more and more data out there, and we need a way to handle all that, all that. Current data is very difficult to handle. Imagine the combinatorial of uh, thousands of times more data in the next five to 10 years. What are we going to do with all that? Um, fourth, public uh, scrutiny and exposure. You were commenting on uh, customer-centric revenue management, maybe, one-on-one uh, -on -one pricing. Yes, there are good ideas. Retail has been doing that for decades. But it's every time it's, it's, it's more and more uh, dangerous. You get exposed to all these discriminations. Customers are very empowered. They will complain. You need to justify revenue management. It's not just charging more because your customer has a higher willingness to pay. You have to justify why you are charging the customer more. So you better add value. If you charge more, you should add more value. And you have to demonstrate the additional value. Well, that's the it's difficult part, isn't it? Demonstrating the additional value. Very hard. That, that it's, uh, you charge very, more very on a Friday night than a Friday morning. But it's not going to be uh, easy. <laughs> well, I, I think the key is not to penalize customers, but to incentivize. So if, if I know you... I give you an incentive. If I don't know you, I give you less incentive. So I, I, I fully understand and fully agree with what you say, but customers are expecting us to move into the direction of we know them, and because we know them, we do value add plus incentive. But Roland, I think the point made was, can you justify that in a court of law? 
I think that was your point, wasn't yes, it? The fact yes. that. How do you justify that? Uh, we, we can see the logic of it uh, as businessmen and airline people, but can you justify it? And not even going to a court of law. Today you are judged on the so social networks. Right. They so can kill your business in one day. Hundreds of thousands of people uh, talking through their social networks. Which is why you need to give it an incentive. Your starting point is maybe 100, and I give him an incentive of 10, and I give you an incentive of 2. But you still get an incentive. I think so you, uh, you, you, I, 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 my task is to still make you feel good that you're not one of those who pays 100, you pay 98. I'm not saying we shouldn't do that. No, 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 I understand. We have to be smart and yes, careful about Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Sergio, you outlined four. Uh, uh, I have one left. Oh, one more, okay. <laughs> Remind us what was the first one again? Sorry? What was the first one? Consumer yeah. empowerment. Oh, consumer empowerment, okay. The last one I, I want to mention is uh, emergence of uh, uh, disruptive uh, business models and technologies. Okay, uh, that's a big challenge because it's going to deviate uh, revenues from the airline, from the traditional airline business model to new business models. Well, what do you mean by disruption? For what? example, the Ubers of the airlines, I haven't seen them uh, yet. They may come. For example, uh, robotic presence. Somebody from Accenture was commenting in a previous uh, uh, debate that they were using a robotic presence since five years ago. So their uh, executives, their consultants don't have to travel to have their meetings uh, abroad. We were scared at the airline 10 years ago with video conference, the emerging uh, video conference technology. We were ever, very scared what's going to happen with business uh, travel and all that. That was nothing compared to robotic presence on whatever is going to come in the, the near future, in the next five to ten years. Okay. So we so better grab those, uh, well, somehow think and, and see how we're going to uh, prevent losing uh, revenue streams. Well, a lot of challenges then. Segev, have you got the answer to these challenges? Well, uh, well look, first of all, tell us what your challenges are. All right, well, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll expand on what Roland said and uh, maybe offer a solution. Uh, Personalization well, wait, wait a minute. of a customer. Well, I also want to hear your views, All what right. you think the challenges are. Okay, so I'll, I agree with uh, almost everything that was said, and I'll add a couple more. Um, one is changing of a model of how airlines operate in terms of more and more collaboration throughout the world, alliances, joint ventures, and that creates both a challenge for revenue management because today uh, the systems uh, and the practices which exist are targeted towards individual airline. There is obviously more opportunities once airlines collaborate more and more. Uh, and the second one, which hasn't been mentioned yet, is integration of the different systems and different processes within an airline. Uh, today, revenue management is still very siloed from pricing decisions, from network planning and capacity planning decisions, uh, and to some extent from operations as well. I see that as an opportunity uh, if we find out ways to integrate different systems and processes that will definitely increase efficiency and uh, contribute to uh, airline profitability. Can, can we summarize that, that by saying integration of silos within the revenue side of airlines? Absolutely. Because that's what yes. we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We're talking about silos. Right. And, none of you have mentioned integration between the travel and the hospitality side. Is that a challenge? I mean, we heard a lot today about, uh, particularly in the early morning session, that, uh, and it links to empowerment that people are concerned not just with the flight, they're concerned with the, uh, the hotel, the, the ground transport, and so on. Is that a challenge for, for airlines in the future, that they will need to, to provide all of that as an integral? And it's also a source of revenue, of course, because they can uh, charge the hotel company for the bookings made on, on their system. I think it's an opportunity and a challenge once the business model is created. Uh, I think we are maybe a step uh, step, step uh, away from it yet. Airlines and travel industry and hospitality industry needs to figure out what the business model of this integration would be. And once this is uh, created, then revenue management practices uh, will most likely make their way uh, into, uh, into these business models. The, the, sorry, we're going to... Uh, what about generating additional sources of revenue, which I touched upon now? Uh, isn't this part of the challenge for the future? Well, uh, 
Aegean doesn't seem to be that good. I, I use it frequently <laughs> at, at, at getting more money out of me, even though I, I hate to say it. Uh, sh shouldn't airlines really be focusing on maximizing the revenue opportunities and looking at things outside the, the, the simple fare? Of course, EasyJet is one of the airlines that has been very successful in that. Air airlines should, and airlines will do it more and more. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, Ryanair has hired 200 programmers, and they're working full speed on, on that, and um, so do we, not with 200 programmers. Um, but it is the future. It, it, everybody talks about uh, you know, air airliners to become retailers, and that goes beyond flights and, and immediate ancillaries you, you have on a flight that goes into uh, pre-travel and post-travel experiences. But you don't sell seats yet. I mean, you don't sell exit rows or front seats. Until now, we don't. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Giorgio, do you do, do, you do that? Well, if uh, there was an important part of the of the previous question that I, I felt was was interesting to try and answer, uh, because it also leads to uh, to this part of the question. Now, uh, if if uh, if uh, people do not remember it, they should look it up in the internet. Uh, something which was called alleges, and that I'm sure that you remember. No, so it was. Uh, about uh, 20 years ago when, when uh, uh, there was an effort to create an integrated group made of uh, uh, United Airlines, uh, Apollo, so the reservation system, uh, Hertz, uh, Hilton, uh, and, 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 uh, and combining into, a, into a, an integrated travel offer. We all know how that ended, so in, in tears and blood and, uh, and loss of money because the focus was uh, not on delivering to the customer the optimal value across all the steps, but on trying to you know, get the customer to become part of that world and then, uh, and then uh, you know, sort of milk the customer uh, uh, for his uh, total travel uh, solutions. What I think is essential, is, uh, is, and that's the, the, the real challenge of the new uh, uh, revenue management uh, generation is again to understand the customer. So not not to pretend to know it, the customer, but uh, to listen carefully to the customer. And therefore, not so much the one-on-one -on -one as a way of uh, targeting the 3C or the 3A, but the one-on-one -on -one as uh, as a way of understanding whether the customer really wants that seat or really wants that flight on a Friday or really wants that flight uh, in economy class, and uh, whether the customer wants the additional services that we are uh, putting up uh, for, uh, for, uh, for additional money. So uh, yes, we do as a number of companies, and we've seen a significant increase of uh, ancillary revenue for, for Aeroflot. Uh, in, uh, so we do target that. But I feel that if we continue along that way, we're looking backwards. We're looking at uh, you know, just adding a shelf in your uh, supermarket and hoping that the customer will pay more money for it. We need to change the, uh, the approach to it, and I think that uh, uh, putting the customer at the center of our efforts is the right way forward. Okay, we'll come back to that uh, later on. Uh, Sergio, what is your view about how, how we broaden the revenue sources? Uh, well, I think it's, it's important to, to look at those uh, new uh, revenue sources, not losing focus on your main revenue source. I believe uh, airlines are not yet uh, that good at uh, optimizing their traditional ticket uh, revenue generation, or they're losing control of that because of all uh, what is happening around. Uh, but of course, uh, new revenue sources are important. Also, new uh, forms of generating the traditional uh, revenue are also important. Uh, they are emerging, things like auctions and options, for example, that I've uh, seen lately. Uh, are interesting models that earners should be analyzing, should be looking at. Uh, again, without losing focus of, of, of their main uh, stream of revenue. But uh, yes, I think it's very you important. You say the mainstream, but an airline like Allegiant, well, if you're which a low is cost, very, very profitable, uh, generates 35, 40% of its revenue from non fare. Uh, yeah. So, what is the right balance that Aeroflot should be aiming for? or or Aegean should be aiming for? Depends a lot on, on your strategy and your positioning. Okay, if you are low cost, of course, uh, your uh, ancillary revenue stream is, is much higher. But there is a big trend uh, of self-segmenting uh, the customer in every industry. 
So I think uh, ancillary revenue is going to grow uh, in every business model. I think, I think if I may, Rodriguez, that, that's a fantastic question. So let me answer it uh, straightforward, in a straightforward way. Uh, we just, as Aeroflot, uh, uh, issued two press releases in, in, a, in a space of two days. One saying that uh, we will carry skis for free. And the second one is that uh, uh, was, uh, we will carry uh, board, surfboard, uh, surf, uh, surfboards for free. So, uh, and that is, in, at least obviously in our opinion, perfectly consistent with the idea of understanding what the customer wants uh, and delivering that. So, uh, we have uh, just a couple of numbers to explain what it means. I mean, in, in the first six months of, of 2016, Aeroflot has carried 10.4% more, passenger, more passengers than last year. Revenue increased 26.8%. So it's not because we are... But how, but how many of them are carrying skis? Well, a, num a good number of them. A good number of them because actually uh, uh, there is, there is uh, 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 as uh, the northern part and the European part of Russia is flat and Russians love their skiing, they travel a lot for that. So listening to the customers, we understood that it made more sense and, and was more effective from a revenue management perspective to uh, give some services for free in exchange for, uh, for an optimized uh, RASC. Okay, uh, the counter example is Air Canada, which charges for skis if you're in economy class, but if you're in business class, you get the ski travel for free. So uh, that means they generate more revenue from the, rev from the economy cabin by charging for, for skis. Uh, so Gev, do you want to come in on this question of uh, Revenue is additional to the basic fare. Yeah, I think the right mix of uh, additional revenue versus base revenue uh, depends on an airline, on what type of customers they serve. And I think that's a solution for uh, the problem Sergio brought up of justification of the price. If airlines learn how to uh, understand their customers better, if they understand what customers value in addition to just being transferred from point A to point B, they will be able to justify difference in prices for different segments of customers. And retailing uh, is a concept that airlines are trying to adopt because the population, the new generation, is brought up on experience in general retailing that is very different from how airlines are selling their seats right now. So I think it's an opportunity for airlines to move into this space, to become retailers, uh, and technology needs to support them. It's not just an opportunity. Customers will demand this more and more. They, they expect us to do that because they get it everywhere. Agreed. And, and we, we have no choice. Mm -hmm. But in the case of Aegean, what proportion of your RASC is uh, from what I might call ancillaries? It's still quite small, I think. Yeah, I, I cannot make too public statement about that. It, it is quite small, but it is uh, not insignificant. Well, that, that's a very diplomatic. Small, <laughs> small, but not insignificant suggests it's quite small. Okay, let me uh, now bring the discussion more to the present day. Um, at the current moment, uh, for example, in Aeroflot, yes. how significant um, are the revenue management systems in contributing to the profitability of, of the airline? One word, crucial. Because, uh, because uh, without a state-of-the-art uh, revenue management, uh, we would not have been able to uh, grow the company the way that we've grown it. Uh, so uh, a, a state-of-the-art uh, revenue management and uh, processes to ensure that uh, state-of-the-art revenue management is, is properly leveraged is crucial to the success of a company. In your case? Absolutely. And it's, it's obviously systems. I think that's the question you asked. But even more than systems, it's people. It's, it's we, we invest a lot and we keep investing into the revenue management team because that's where we make the difference. How many people have you got involved in the revenue management? In revenue management, um, it's about 22 and add pricing and uh, system support and uh, the 30, 32. With a total revenue, what is the total revenue of Aegean? Uh, 1 billion, 12 million pa uh, passengers. 1 billion. 
Right. Much, much larger numbers. I mean, uh, yeah. because uh, and, and not necessarily comparable because uh, the revenue management team of Aeroflot also manages uh, the uh, uh, flights of our subsidiaries. So the numbers are are, are not comparable, uh, I guess. Okay. Uh, um, Sergey, if you've been involved in watching management practices in relation to to to, to, to how they develop and use their revenue management. What are the best practices in terms of what you've seen? So I think it does depend uh, on the type of business model airline runs, uh, what is best working for them. Uh, but I think, and I agree uh, that revenue management was a key to success uh, of uh, airline industry. Uh, there is a few things that uh, we do quite well with revenue management as a community. Obviously, it started as a way to segment customers maybe not in the best possible way, somewhat artificial, but the major objective for revenue management was to segment customers and to utilize different willingness to pay and uh, revenue management uh, systems and practices uh, were quite successful in doing that. And then in my view, uh, revenue management went through a couple of major transformations. First, uh, we realized that it's better to maximize the total network revenue instead of looking flight by flight. And uh, we learned how to do this, and we created systems and practices which allowed uh, airlines to do this. And then second, with the uh, emergence of the internet and the removing of, uh, restrict of uh, uh, rules on fares, uh, we needed to learn how to deal with a demand uh, where consumers going from one option to another, from one price point to another point. And uh, there was quite a lot of development on how to manage this uh, dependent demand, and I think we, will, we uh, more or less figured out how to do this as well. So I would say network management um, and uh, dependent demand management, these are the two good practices that if an airline learns how to do this well, uh, we will be quite successful. You raise a very interesting and important question. You said the key thing is to maximize the revenue in total, not the revenue per flight. Correct. Uh, because I was brought up in the EasyJet model, there the focus was to maximize the revenue per flight for each aircraft. Because once the aircraft has gone, the seat is lost. If you have an empty seat, you you, 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 it's, it's lost production. How Fair can enough. you justify, uh, or, or is it that you've been working only with network airlines and not with low-cost airlines? No, what I said is, in the very beginning is that the best practice depends on what business model uh, airline uh, is using, and uh, that was sort of uh, 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 prevent that particular question. For an airline which is running the, uh, primarily local markets, uh, leg systems are sufficient. Uh, you mean point-to-point? Point-to-point. For the airlines which have significant connecting traffic or significant partnership agreements with our airlines, uh, it's important for them to uh, understand how to maximize the total network. Uh, Sergio, do you have a view on this? Um, what should we be maximizing? Total revenue or revenue per, no, per total flight? Total revenue, definitely. Especially uh, talking about uh, ancillary revenues and other sources of uh, uh, revenue. It's very important to integrate uh, the, all the sources and take a uh, a transversal decision on the revenue maximization function. If you maximize the ancillary revenue, but you lose your ticket revenue, then you're not doing a good, uh, a good business. You better maximize the total revenue you get from the customer. And that means network revenue means uh, ticket plus ancillary. Uh, it also means loyalty. You should also be looking uh, at how you impact the long-term value of your customer. Okay, and so you have to, to, to analyze and, and comprehend uh, your customer and take that into account for the revenue maximization. That's why I said at the beginning, I, th I think of revenue management not just about revenue, but it's also about developing a competitive tool, and loyalty is part of that. Sure. Uh, Giorgio, you, you want to comment on this question. What should yes. we be maximizing? Well, I mean, uh, I think I, 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 I agree with, your, uh, with the way you phrased the question, Rigas, in the sense that uh, uh, you need to target uh, flight, total flight uh, uh, revenue, so, but, but on, 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 on a per flight basis. So if you, st if you take the ball off, uh, uh, if, you, if you take the eyes off that ball, 
uh, then, then uh, soon enough you'll find yourself uh, uh, justifying why that flight is losing money, why that leg is losing money, why that route is losing money, and, and justifying it based on, oh, yes, but I have a total uh, network revenue, I have, a, I have a network contribution, I have such and such, I have a, an increasing loyalty system, and so on. And we know where, 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 that, where that ends. So crucial, and, and that's why I like what Sergei was saying in terms of uh, integrating the various systems, is that uh, you start with uh, the lowest possible or the most detailed uh, 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 point of analysis, and then you build up on it. But never, ever forget that, uh, as you rightly said, seats are a perishable uh, good. So if, 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 you for, if, you, if you don't maximize your revenue per single flight, then uh, you might as well give up uh, operating. So we have a contradiction on the panel here, which is good. Because uh, <laughs> do, do, you want, do you want to respond to that? Uh, Very interesting. Uh, so I, yeah. I also want to comment later, please. Well, I, I think it's maybe different approaches to exactly the same problem. Um, the way to, one of the ways to control uh, total revenue or network revenue of an airline is to pay close attention to each flight. Uh, so I, when we're maximizing network, sometimes we might have to sacrifice uh, individual flight performance, uh, but we need to understand why exactly uh, this is sacrificed. So uh, we shouldn't be just assuming that some flights uh, can be not profitable just because we're maximizing the total network. We need to understand the reasons. We need to understand the mix of passengers on these networks. We need to understand why these flights is important. I know very specific examples that airlines maintain flights which were consistently underperforming if you look at the flight uh, performance by itself but it was clear that these flights are very strong contributor to a network and that's why airlines continue to operate flights and even markets you say that but air france and lufthansa have for the last 25 years been operating a domestic network which loses a lot of money and they've been operating domestic sectors which cannot be justified except uh, on the basis that they contribute to the long haul, but the long haul hasn't been making profit either. So, you, you, they, the, I mean, uh, Georgia was right. There is a risk in over, overstating the case for, for taking the, the whole. And as you say, quite rightly, you have to monitor very carefully whether an individual route which is losing money is justified because of what it can contribute to the total Revenue. Well, that's, that's an important best practice. You should be measuring every month, every week, what is the contribution to the network. You should evaluate your flights uh, based on direct uh, revenue and on the contribution to the network. If you don't have control of that, of course, uh, you will en end up optimizing only flight by flight and losing the contribution to the network. So there's an opportunity to increase the, net uh, the network contribution. So, well, but said, having said that, I agree that uh, working with network contribution is much harder. Mathematically, you can show, you can demonstrate, you can simulate that you get 2% extra net revenue to the bottom line. But in practice, it's very hard to, to make it real. Roland, do you want to comment on this? What are, what are you trying to maximize? You, know, you, you, you can run an airline and you feel like I'm doing very well, I have network contribution of both sides of the hub and you lose a lot of money and you go bankrupt. So you, you, <laughs> you, you cannot live from network contribution. It's not possible. You need to have a core business which is uh, on the route, which brings you profitability. You may have in your network destinations, markets, routes, you, you keep, but your focus at the end of the day is we, we do O and D revenue management. We measure O and D values and flows and, and everything. But at the end of the day, every airline still has most of its KPIs is on a per flight level, and, and you of measure yes. you measure if it works or not. So if if you don't manage the core of your business on a per flight level in a profitable way, you have no you have no you will not survive as an airline. Okay, uh, let, let's move on. Uh, uh, or rather go a step back. Up to now, we've been talking very much about future challenges and how you move forward. Uh, I'd like now to switch the discussion to the problems today, 
What are the challenges that airlines face today? Um, within your revenue management practices, within the way you run the airline. Well, do you want to talk? And it's Chatham House rules. Nobody yep. will, uh, if you say anything you feel is indiscreet, Chatham House rules means nobody can quote you as saying it, and if they do, you'll deny you've said it. <laughs> <laughs> it's recorded. <laughs> I'm only going to say and, 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 I, and I will confirm that you didn't say it. <laughs> exactly. And we have a deal here. Um, so. Today, what are... What are to, to, today, it's the volatility of the external factors. We are not in control of the geopolitical uh, uh, happenings. We are not in control of terrorist attacks. We are not in control of the climate. And all these things, they have a massive impact on demand. And this is where we are challenged in revenue management. Actually, first of all, on the network side, on how much capacity are we really planning. And once we have planned the capacity, because capacity you don't uh, shift easily, with all these changes, it's, it's in, in, in two weeks, we have uh, one year of the first Paris terrorist attack. January was the second one. March was Brussels. And all these things have had a heavy impact on travel behavior of Europeans for traveling within Europe. And all these you cannot plan and your revenue management system cannot adjust fast enough because these are, these are really massive changes in the demand behavior and the revenue management team is trying to cope with it. But we have lots of data, but at the end of the day, we don't have a, a crystal ball neither. So I, I see the external factors um, the, uh, as a main element. Another external factor is capacities. Not, uh, first of all, our own, of course. But there are so many planes ordered, and these planes coming. Uh, Ryanair is getting 50 planes next year. That's one every week. And let's assume uh, they phase out some, but they're still adding lots of planes. So there are planes coming every week out of the manufacturers and they put into the marketplace. And even if Ryanair is phasing out planes, guess what? These old planes, they will still fly, just not for Ryanair. They will fly for someone else. So there is massive capacity coming and, 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 and planes will keep flying. And I see these two things, the volatility of the environment, of the demand, the changes, and the capacity. Okay, let me come back to the first one. Uh, because you said, and you explained that the political changes, the attacks, and so on. And you said we can't deal with them. I, you, I said we cannot control them. You control them, but then you said we can't adapt fast enough to them. This is the challenge we have. Yeah. Because you asked, the question was, what yeah, are yeah. our challenges? Yeah. And this is the challenge. But is there something you could do to, or, or any practice you could adopt to be faster in responding to those challenges? You, you just need to keep monitoring what's happening. Day to day. Uh, 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 day to day. The first Paris attack had a different impact uh, uh, than the second. Once we had Brussels, and that was within four months since first Paris, patterns changed again. You, you just need to remain on top of, of monitoring booking flows, change of uh, booking, uh, booking curves, uh, monitoring what are you do are your competitors doing and then just find the right balance and how quick were you able to adapt your offer in response to these changes because presumably <laughs> what you're saying is that flights to Paris or or Brussels uh, loads were very low do you have the ability and the flexibility to reduce capacity in the short term well, in Brussels we were forced because the airport was closed and, and <laughs> we couldn't fly anymore um, other than that, we, we are, um, you called us a small airline, I, I think we are a medium-sized airline by now, but we are still having the, the benefits of, of uh, not being large. We take uh, quick decisions. We, can, we, we move aircraft um, uh, within a very short period if needed and um, okay. just, just to adjust. There, there are, in this volatile environment, there are very few holy cows. Obviously, if, if you have flights into London Heathrow, you, you're not going to move them out because you, you lose slots. But other than that, we, we are very agile. In fact, one of your predecessors made a mistake of selling your morning slots at uh, 
at Heath Hill, which was a bad mistake the Olympic did. Uh, Giorgio, uh, what are your challenges today in the way... Well, I would echo what, uh, what Roland was saying, uh, even though possibly with, with a different uh, uh, perspective, uh, uh, in the sense that I think that uh, as much as uh, revenue management is, is, has been a, a fantastic enabler of uh, a more effective uh, approach to the market, uh, where there is room for improvement is in uh, 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 what appears to be more and more the, the domain of, of, of uh, old, you know, so online travel agents, which are very capable of uh, steering demand uh, especially close to the departure date. So the, the close to the departure date, I think, customers are more and more uh, stepping away from, from airlines and, and moving into, uh, into uh, 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 providers that are arbitraging uh, between... Uh, Off offline services. agencies. Yes. Online agencies. So that, that's, uh, that's the challenge. How to make sure that... Uh, uh, very close to departure, we retain the degree of effectiveness that we have in terms of renewal management uh, uh, farther away from, from the departure date. That's your main challenge, you see. Well, I think it's, it's not only our main challenge, I think it's the industry challenge. Okay. Uh, Sergio, do you want to comment on this? What do you think the current challenges are? Well, hanging from you, what you said, um, I think uh, stated in a more technical way, Demand forecasting is a huge challenge, and it's going to get uh, more and more complicated. Uh, revenue management systems and processes uh, rely a lot on the quality of the forecast. And forecasts are getting disturbed by external events with more and more frequency. Uh, they are uh, lying behind because they lack information. There is so much uh, additional information out there that the forecasting models don't take into account, that it's very hard to forecast and then to optimize your flights. So that's a big challenge. Second, uh, I would mention uh, price monitoring. It's a big challenge. The, the market is every time more and more dynamic. Uh, airlines are getting more and more aggressive, travel, online travel agencies, uh, etc. The market is moving faster uh, through many additional channels, so the airline has to be on top of uh, monitoring prices with, with a much higher frequency and reacting faster. So that's the third challenge, time to market. So I, I've been ana we, are, we have been analyzing uh, ATPCO uh, data, that's what we do with, uh, with Eranguru. We produce uh, insights from ATPCO data and other price sources. Airlines are taking around 10 to 12 hours to respond to, to, price to price actions from com competitors on average. So in 10 to 12 hours, you lose market share. And that's the average. And sometimes you take three days, four that days reacting. That depends on the perspective. If it takes the other airline to follow me 10 hours, <laughs> I, I win market share for 10 hours. <laughs> okay, but, so that, but all you're doing then is each <laughs> pushing each other down. Yeah. Another big challenge I see is the speed of innovation. I think uh, revenue management and pricing uh, needs to be on top uh, of uh, innovation, uh, needs to be testing a new technology and incorporating uh, new ideas because the market is moving too fast. But it gets stuck with the internal bureaucracy of the airline. Airlines are spending, I estimate, around 70% of their uh, IT budget in maintaining legacy systems. Uh, big money to just maintain legacy systems, to renovate their hardware, to pay for software licenses, and to, to keep hundreds of people uh, in IT departments taking care of the hardware and the software. Instead of uh, spending 70% of their money uh, innovating and testing new ideas and maybe having uh, working with, uh, with suppliers like Enguru, that okay. can help them innovate at a much uh, uh, higher pace. Giorgio, what do you think uh, is your biggest challenge now? You mentioned one. Is that the only the real issue? Uh, yeah. Uh, because I noticed none of you mentioned uh, integrating our operations with co-chair partners. None of you mentioned maximizing revenue from ancillaries. Um, uh, 
you know, you have co-chair partners, you have alliance partners, uh, you have joint ventures, or you may have joint ventures. Uh, aren't these key issues which need to be integrated into the revenue management system? Yes, they are, in particular... Uh, in, in and, but have you done it, I mean, effectively? Uh, well, as, as I said before, it, this uh, rigors is sort of a, 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 the same answer that, uh, that, uh, that I would give about airlines being in transition. So there's always, uh, let me say, a room for, for improving. There's always uh, something that uh, you must have in order to perform uh, better. And, uh, and uh, you know, the, the, the ideal way is, is to identify that something that is relevant uh, without... Uh, uh, you know, uh, chasing uh, something that then ends up in, in being uh, uh, not, not, not so important. So, yes, I agree with you that all of the things that you've listed, the uh, uh, integration with partners is very important. Why? Because uh, in airlines are becoming uh, larger and larger. And they're investing more and more in their brands. So brand being, uh, you know, the, the visible part of an entire product proposition, which is made of pricing, which is made of... Uh, Availability, which is made of onboard service, which is made of ancillary services, and uh, uh, say letting that brand be deteriorated because you're not properly managing a relationship with the partner that has a code share with you is certainly one of the big challenges. But not not only from a revenue management perspective, but even you know uh, revenue management as the enabler of a consistent brand uh, approach. Sergey, do you want to comment on on the discussion about the current? Um, I wanted to add something uh, very different from uh, what was already described. Uh, revenue management has 30 years of developing systems and practices, and it's already fairly complicated. We are talking about new opportunities and the challenges which exist today, which means to solve them and to uh, take advantage of these opportunities, we need to add more into the practices and, and the systems. And I think. Uh, what the challenge we recognize is how complex the systems became, how difficult it is for airlines to manage these systems, to train personnel, uh, to be able to uh, conduct these revenue management practices. And I think that's another um, opportunity or another uh, sort of a direction that we as a community need to take is to simplify uh, the practices, to simplify the systems without losing uh, all, all of the advantages of we've been developed so far. But it, isn't that a challenge? Because you mentioned earlier that uh, one of the challenges was to bring the silos together into a single system. But doesn't that create greater complexity and greater difficulty in training people to operate effectively with a single system? It does. So I'm not saying we shouldn't be uh, advancing revenue uh, management systems more. I'm saying it's a challenge to advance them, to address uh, more and more of the business needs, and yet keep them simple enough so the analysts can use them and can understand what's happening uh, uh, within their system. Sergio uh, mentioned the complexity of a forecast. It takes a PhD in operation research these days to understand what the forecast uh, in revenue management is doing. And it's, it's difficult for airlines uh, to enable their, uh, their analysts to, uh, to use these systems. Let, let me go on to one more question, then I'll uh, ask for, for questions from the floor. Uh, and I'll address it basically to the two airline people here. And that is, and, and then go on to the others. D do you believe your airline is maximizing the opportunities from additional revenue sources? The additional revenue sources broadly may be ancillaries, but what does that mean? It means, uh, uh, Charges for baggage, charges for particular seats, uh, selling, uh, selling on board, um, selling hotels, selling car hire, and so on. Mm -hmm. are, are you maximizing that all on the uh, Aegean? You said before it was a, a, a small but not insignificant. So that implies you are not maximizing. You, you, you need to do first things first. And, and for us, that clearly meant investing into the traditional revenue management that is on the supplier side, uh, systems, and, and uh, even more important on the people side. That's where we have clearly spent time and money, and that's where we have invested so far. On the ancillary side, if you compare a Chien's offering to what some other airlines are doing, you're certainly behind. 
we're also ahead of some of the other airlines. We're not an airline that's comparing ourselves to the people behind us. Obviously, we look ahead and there is room for us to improve. There is room to invest. There is room to go forward. But just as, as uh, Giorgio was very firm before, um, it, a flight must be a profit, a route must be a profitable route. I, I'm very firm about let's do first things first. And, and the, the big money is still where we look. Uh, uh, it, it sounds that like Giorgio, you're in transition. Giorgio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, transi I'm transi transitioning from the transition. Giorgio. Uh, thanks, Rias. Are you maximizing your revenue opportunities? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But let me, let me clarify that. You what, don't really believe that. No, no, no. I do believe that. But because, uh, because uh, again, I'm, I'm, uh, we're talking to, uh, to uh, a group of experts. Uh, so let me, as, 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 uh, as I always try to be, uh, uh, be very direct. So when we talk about maximizing the revenue opportunity, we're, uh, by definition, saying maximizing the cost uh, uh, side for the passenger, no? because we're maximizing the revenue that we extract from that single passenger. Yeah, you're increasing the fare. Well, no, the point is, are we uh, uh, proportionally increasing the value that we're, gi we're giving to that, uh, to that passenger? And it goes back to the question that you were asking earlier on, can it stand in, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, in court, or can it stand uh, once uh, the customer asks, uh, what do I get in exchange? So. Uh, and the way we do that is because we leverage the brand. No? So we say, OK, dear customer, you're, you're traveling with airline A or B or C, which has, uh, which has a reputation for a service and so on. And therefore, you should pay more or you should accept to be charged extra for this service, whether the service is provided by the airline or whether the service is uh, 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 channeled by the airline uh, through a website to a car rental. No? Because uh, how do you maximize ancillary revenue from, from, uh, from a rental? By simply charging the passenger a bit more. So uh, the point is... Well, wait a minute, give him the option. Well, yeah, but I mean... Uh, he uh, has the option whether to, to accept the cost of booking the hotel uh, through, through the airline. Yes, but why would the airline make money out of it? Because it's providing a service. It's providing a service and charging for the service. Yeah. That service is available through Expedia or Booking.com. So what is the additional value that you give to that customer so that he pays the airline the service for booking that, uh, that hotel through you instead of uh, leaving the website of the airline, getting into the Booking.com uh, website and comparing to other hotels instead of uh, comparing two hotels? So what I'm trying to say is, why did I give such a, such a straightforward answer? Yes, we are maximizing the opportunities for additional revenue because it's based on our perception of what is the right balance between brand value, service proposition, and the money we charge for that. So first comes increasing the brand value, increasing the offer to your passengers, and then charging for that. OK, well, I have a different view of that because I've worked. That. Uh, I've been on the board of EasyJet, and there we make a significant um, contribution to revenue from ancillary sources, and selling hotel beds is, is one of them. And but it's not that we offer them a hotel. They get a link to a hotel company, which gives them a choice of hotels and prices yeah. uh, and uh, uh, locations. But anyway, Sergey, if you want to comment on this, are airlines doing enough to maximize revenues from ancillary sources? I think... Do they have the systems, first of all? Uh, uh, they have to have the will to do it, and then they have... Georgia doesn't have the will, I don't think. <laughs> no, <laughs> we do. I said, but I said in a certain order, because I said okay. that, that there is a priority list. All right. I agree with that. I think first thing first. So before we even get into the systems and practices, uh, I hope that airlines uh, will have more of a marketing uh, and more of a creative uh, way to provide more value, more services, generate new opportunities to serve customers, understand customers better, what is it what we're looking for, and, uh, and provide this value. And once this is happening, uh, we will be able to uh, provide better systems uh, which enable these practices. Do you want to comment briefly no, because I want to take some questions? I, I agree with that, but we need to simplify. We need to simplify systems. Uh, 
Today, analysts spend more, most of their time looking at the data, analyzing, and very little time taking decisions and discussing the strategy and executing. So they are overwhelmed already by data and systems. So we need to work in the simplification of the systems in empowering them with uh, better uh, and automated decisions. So um, you're in favor of simplification and quick yes. decision making? Yes. Simplification can help Which is the decision a, process. There's a trade-off, but if you're going to handle more and more data, if you don't simplify, that was, that's going to be impossible. But that's not the answer to the question, should airlines do more to generate and They should, but not losing focus on their main uh, revenue stream. Okay. Well, let me ask a final question of, of the panel, um, and that is really, what is the next jump you want from the revenue management? I think, Sergio, partly you've answered that. Uh, but, Segev, you ought to answer this question. What is the next jump we should get uh, and then we'll ask the airlines whether they want it. Well, I think we sort of led to the answer to that question by the discussion today. Uh, all the opportunities which we mentioned and all the challenges that airlines are, are facing today, that's, that's what the next generation revenue management system should help uh, to address. Uh, they need to help airlines to become better retailers and uh, manage uh, the total revenue uh, coming from the different streams in the most optimal way. They need to be able to handle all the new data that Sergio was talking about, uh, that is coming, uh, better understanding of a consumer, better understanding of a competition, uh, and be able to do it much faster, almost in real time, and also uh, to make it simple for an airline to be able to manage a system like this. Uh, so I think these are the main principles. Uh, I think there's very little to add to that. <laughs> uh, you've summed it up, uh, Giorgio, do you want to uh, are we happy with that conclusion from the panel? I think it's a fair conclusion, yes. Uh, I second that. Okay. Uh, can you join me in thanking the panel? We've had a fascinating discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you.